Let's get the party started. Yes, let's get this party started. Welcome, Misty. And let's see who all the people. We've got Chandra, Cindy. Cindy, you survived the weather today. Yay! I know what bad weather is like. We've got Rachel and Evelyn and Peggy and Pat, Jackie. So excited to see what new thing you have, Sharon. Oh, do I have a surprise for you? And it's not clay related. And we've got Tanya and April and Evelyn. I think I said Evelyn. Linda from Oregon. Carla. Hey, so if you'll go up to the top in the, um, in the, um, <laughs> stop, in the, um, above where the, the live is and click the link to let, um, Facebook show my streaming software your name so that I can see you on the screen instead of having to keep looking at my um, phone to see who you are because without clicking that link it simply says on my computer Facebook user Facebook user Facebook user and I have to keep looking at my phone Peggy I see you on the screen so you've clicked the link and you don't have to click it every time I think you do it once and it lasts for a long time so hey Christine um, somebody said they got their box of goodies just got my box of goodies today. That was Amy, also awesome. Sharon, I finally made it. Set a timer. Way to go, Sharon. Hi, Edie. Okay, I have something to show you. I'm, I'm kind of trying to watch and see if my daughter's on <laughs> because, um, let's see. Do I see her watching? No, I don't because I haven't told her and uh, I want to surprise her. She's out of town and when she gets back on Sunday, I want to surprise her. I can't find the link. They have three dots. Um, it should be where it says I'm live and it says, it usually says Ecam blah, blah, blah. That's what you'll click on, I believe. If not, I will get specific instructions for next time. Um, so, Peggy, yes, yours is on the way. Uh, we are, you know, we like to work within a 10 biz business day. Does not include weekends and holidays, which there were several here, Christmas and New Year's. Um, and we are running about one week behind that. Um, yours doesn't say that. Okay, I'll figure out where it should go, Jackie. But for now, I'm looking on my phone anyway. It's in the overview if you're on a cell phone. Oh, okay, so there you have it. Thank you, Rachel. It's in the overview if you have a cell phone. Okay, while we're waiting for people to come on, hey, Linda, can't get but regular, sorry. That's okay. I see the names um, on my phone, and I'll just look back and forth. But before we get started, I want to show you all something. So about... Three, we, you know, we all know we have big dogs. And uh, we had always had little tiny dogs. Also, a little lap dog. We had, my grandson Charlie is now 17. But we bought him a little, <clears throat> a little apricot poodle that um, never hit five pounds. And, he, and, and Roper was his name. Roper lived with us. And, um. Charlie was over every weekend or every other weekend. And so um, we've always had a little, a little lap dog. Well, when we lost Roper finally, oh, I guess it's been almost three years ago now. We just couldn't do another little dog um, for a while. But greetings from North Carolina. Hey, Catherine. Hey, Linda. So, but we have been kind of missing something our little lap dog so are you guys ready for this oh my goodness gracious we compromised i wanted a tiny little lap dog hi from montana hi liz i wanted a little tiny lap dog and he has always wanted a schnauzer so guess what we got 
Be ready. Oh my gosh. Looky at this. Oh, 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 oh. oh, put your ear up. Put your ear back up. Look at this. Oh. Oh my gosh. Look at the size of my hand to this little guy. He is one pound five ounces and he is um, 12 weeks old. He, we will be lucky if he hits three pounds full grown. And he is such a little joy. Don't baby. So we were, we were been gonna call him Peanut because he's such a little peanut. I watch Yellowstone. Don't ridicule me. I, I watch Yellowstone. He's a little bitty guy with a big attitude, so we were going to call him Rip. But then Peanut kind of fit. But look at those ears. Look at this guy. I've been thinking Mighty Mouse, but Peanut's probably what's going to stick. So if you have any suggestions between Rip, Peanut, and Mighty Mouse, put it in the comments. But is this not just adorable? Oh, he's just the pet's on baby. Oh, the little baby. And he loves us already. Oh, he, and he's just the best puppy already. Um, uh, let's see. He would love my Jack, who is a cheap palm and is about three pounds. Oh, Rachel, your, th your twins were three pounds each at birth. And I thought they were tiny. We called one of the girls Peanuts. She was the tiniest. Oh, that's so cute. Yeah, you got to be, well, not with twins because they're not going to be on the floor. But um, this little guy, we have a big playpen set up for him um, because he, you know, can't be on our lap 24-7. Um, but he sleep, he'll sleep in the bed. It, he's in a, um, he slept in the bed last night in a um, soft, one of those soft carry crates with his blanket and his toys, and it was right there on the bed, but in that crate, because God forbid this little guy falls off the bed. Home oh, baby, home oh, baby. So he did so good. He just laid down, went to sleep, didn't hear a peep out of him, got him out of his crate this morning, took him right into his playpen, and voila, he went potty. So perfect little guy. Peanut, it flows sweet when you're calling the rest of the dogs outside, too. Yeah, and he's not, he's not going to go outside um, yet. He, he's, he's potty pad trained already. And uh, so, but he hasn't even, he hasn't even been on grass yet. So he's not fully vaccinated. So he won't go outside until he's fully vaccinated. But he is. He loves to give little kisses. Oh, he's so sweet. But I'm going to try to hold him here on my lap because he needs to take a nap. But if he still stays feisty, I'll go put him in his playpen. He is the most adorable little thing. Um, I can't tell you, we did not even realize how badly we missed a little lap dog. Um, and we only got him yesterday. And he's a teeny, tiny, tiny. Tiny little baby. Anyway, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go put him in his little playpen so I can get down to business with you guys. But look at this. Look at this. Okay, I'll be right back. Give me one second. Okay, and he's so funny. He can see me, and he'll sit there and watch me, and he'll be fine. If he can't see me, then he might cry a little bit. Hey, Bettina. Okay, so I hear him. Um, so today, I think it was last time we were in Create, I created that nested set using our solar dual drapes. Can you guys hear him? Um solar dual drapes and uh, the fancy rectangle lip template to show you, you can mix and match. Well, we've been having a gay old time with these new hybrid forms. 
and I cannot, can you hear him squeaking? Um, I cannot tell you how fun they are. Well, I've been wanting to do some Lotus designs. So I have a, a Lotus, this might be backwards. Is this backwards? Is the, the, that symbol for yoga backwards to you? I don't know which way. Oh, no, this way showed. Hold on. Yep, this way. So I have this stencil that will go, and I didn't use it tonight, but I just wanted to show it to you. On the Lotus, the Lotus Flower rim template, and it's designed to, see this? It's going to give you an outlined edge when you, when you glaze over this. I, I can't get it set up exactly perfect this direction, but you're going to have a glazed border and oh it's so cute so anybody that's into yoga um, this goes really good if you're not into yoga and you want this as the middle of your flower just put a little piece of tape over the yoga symbol and then don't glaze over that and then once that's off of there you can have that circle that's in the middle and you can do anything at all that you want to in the middle you can Take the end of a paintbrush and, and make little dots in there and make it a center. But this, there's, I have a lot of plans for the lotus, the lotus flower template or rim template. Um, and so since we've been working with the hybrid uh, the new hybrid forms, I thought we would take this, and I've been doing nothing, but I've been doing mostly the baby. So this time I thought I would take three of these and make a nested set of the lotus flower with the hybrid forms and see what kind of gorgeous flower we could come up with with an end product with a flower. I will tell you that with that lotus flower, um, I have, like I said, that lotus, this will give it an inside, and, and if you don't do yoga, put tape over that and do something on the inside, but I also have the most amazing lotus flower pen coming out. I am probably going to debut it at Alabama Clay Conference. I have several things, several exciting things that will come out at Alabama Clay Conference first. Um, I haven't decided yet if I'm going to give sneak peeks. I may, but I have some fresh things that are going to come out first at Alabama Clay Conference. So if you're there, you will get them first. And... After we get done with the conference, then I'll put them up on the website for everybody else. But I have to have something new for that conference, don't you think? Um, so I have some really fun stuff new for that conference. I can't wait. But in the meantime, um, I've had a lot of people ask about a lotus flower. There are going to be stamps for that. There's a rolling pin for that. Um, there's the stencil for that and there might be another stencil for that I'm not sure but it'll be a whole collection you can mix and match pick one pick none pick whatever you want um, but it's um, it's really cool looking when it's finished so let's get started let me start with our normal prep the clay um, had a friend who had one they called her Pepsi light <laughs> oh, that's cute um, so cute little kisses. Yeah, my daughter's going to have a fit, but she'll get over it. Because we have too many dogs already, but we love them. Okay, I have, I have answered everything. So, I'm going to get started with the typical prep the clay. I know that, that all of you that work with clay do this every single time. And probably wonder, 
Why does she show that every single time? Well, because every single live, we end up with some new people. They may be just new to the group. That ring light's in my face. Or they may be new to clay. And that's a vital part. So I show that every time. So let's show the prep in the clay. Okay. We are going to make a gorgeous nested set today. I want to show you this is the lotus flower template. And for those of you who um, deep dishes and look at what this is going to look like, you could glaze. There you have it. And it may look big and tall, but they are going to stack. And so we have the five, six and a half, and eight inch forms, our new hybrids. I'm going to jump in the middle and do the six and a half on camera. And I'll do the other ones because they'll be identical. I'll do them off camera. And we will make this gorgeous nested set. This Brown clay really makes my fingers dirty, but that's what it is. Okay, so let me um, go ahead and compress this clay while we're chatting. Um, I'll tell you what, our weather here has been hot in the day, 85 degrees and cold at night. So our bodies don't know which way to go. Our wardrobes don't know which way to go. Do we have winter clothes? Do we have summer clothes? Is your weather as crazy as ours? Does it bounce all around? Let me know in the chat. Talk to me. Tell me. Tell me what you're up to and tell me what your weather is doing to you. Um, this is my local clay company, Trinity Ceramics. This is their spectacular, their their make on Laguna's speckled buff. I love this clay. It it fires so gorgeous. Um, I have a bowl down there. Let me show you. It's filthy dirty, but it fires to this gorgeousness. Ooh, I love it. All right, let me flip this over. And I didn't make this very thick tonight. The last nested set I made was pretty thick um, because of what I was going to use it for. I wanted it thick. So this one I'm going to do pretty thin and show you you can do it both ways. Piece of trash in there. So we will do it both ways. Now, let me switch camera, or not camera views, let me um, change videos so that I can get my banding wheel set up here, and then we'll come back and we'll make this sweet thing. Okay, I kind of sped through some of that because I forgot that I talked all about those templates and um, the stencil in the prep the clay video, and I sat here and went through all of that with you in the beginning, so... I didn't put you through it again. I kind of skipped through that. Um, so here in northern Michigan, we had our first sunshine in 30 days. Ooh, ooh. So in Michigan, have um, I have last week, I took a clay class, not a clay class, a glass class from somebody from Michigan. Um, I'm going to go grab it during the next video and show you what I made. It's gorgeous. Um, crazy weather, hurricanes, huge amounts of rain. Where is this at? In the foothills. Oh, Sacramento. What? Hurricanes in Sacramento? Down in the, in Sacramento, flooding everywhere. It's been crazy. Who is saying that? Um, oh, Jackie. Wow, California's been crazy. Florida's been crazy. Look what Misty said. Where did it go? Uh, Misty said it was crazy. In the Panhandle, beautiful in the west coast of Washington, says Bridget. Um, Northern Michigan, oh, that was Sharon. Hey, Sharon. Flooding in California. You know, 
I'm so busy, I will tell you. I took the news apps and everything off my phone because, you know, the news had gotten so bad and I had so much going on and the news bothered me. Um, and my alerts for weather, I don't know why, they stopped coming up. In fact, when we had those tornadoes a few weeks back, my daughter called me at, I don't know, a little before 6 o'clock in the morning. Mom, we're having tornadoes. Get up. So I haven't even been watching the weather. Um, 100 mile an hour winds. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I hate hearing all of that. Rachel, a tree fell through your friend's roof and, tra <gasps> and trapped him. Oh, my gosh. You know, even, okay, so he got hurt, and that's horrible. But the fear he must have been feeling during that had to be horrible as well. Oh, I feel so bad for that. Um, we have storms and tornado warnings here in North Carolina. I mean, right now you're in tornado warnings? If you're in tornado warnings, that means they're close by. Rachel, or Rhonda, you need to go take cover. We'll be here on the replay. But if it's a if it's a watch, they're around. But if it's a warning, you need to be going. Oh, Rhonda, go get in cover. Okay. Now I'm going to start the dish. And I'm going to do tonight a little different. If I'd stop jabbering. I'm, I, I'm kind of, you've all seen me make a deep dish before. Um, and I go through making this one and I'm putting a foot on it. But then I didn't do, um, you're in a safe place. Okay. Well, you stay safe. Um, but when it comes to flipping them out, I flip two, the two, two of them out over, they're sitting on my clay table. But when I flip the last one out, I'm going to do that live, holding it up because my iPad battery keeps dying. But I may, I may hook my iPad back up during one of the videos. But I'm going to flip the last one live, and then I'm going to show you how I fiddle with it um, and, and kind of finish it up because it's pretty stiff. I did it early so I could do this because you guys always see when we make things fresh, but there are things you want to do that you can't really do right at the time we're making them. So I've let these set out uncovered. In fact, I have one right here ooh, 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 look at that and um, I will I will do live I will flip it over and show you how I kind of finish it up and fiddle with it and um, do kind of the polishing touches on it that I can do prior to um, bone dry so that you can see that part tornadoes are scary oh my gosh yes um, they are they are scary. I will tell you, tornadoes are scary, but you get warnings that they're coming. And you can go take cover, hopefully. But earthquakes, like California, you don't have any warning. You just start rocking and rolling. I've lived in California most of my life. And that's pretty scary, too. I'm originally from Michigan. Tornadoes are scary. Did you say Michigan or Montana? I don't know. I can't. I have clay all over my phone. Okay, let's go on to the starting of the dish. Well, I have my banding wheel, my banding wheel sister, my peg, my template, and my farm. And now what I'm going to do is twist this to where I like the placement. And then I have my clay back here. I like to grab my clay and pull it across. So I can't fit it all in the camera at once, but I'll adjust it in one second. I'm going to grab this and make sure it covers everything. And then what I like to do is take those folds and lift up and press down and lift up and press down and that takes those folds out I lift up from the bottom and press into the form like this 
go around several times because it's going to lift up folds in other areas. And then I gently come down, very gently, come down with my hands and I'm coming in and kind of pushing up like so. And look at those folds totally disappear. So I'm going to take my yellow rib and I'm just going to kind of slowly come up here. And I like to go along where my octagon sides are. And then I come down a little further out to the edge of my template. I can even come from the top side down. And I'm not squishing it into the form at all. I'm just giving it a soft whoosh, if you will. I'm going to take my red rib and just kind of go around the top. Now I'm going to take my sponge and lightly come around the bottom, get all the clay burgers off. I don't have texture on this. But even if I did, this, you know, I'm not doing it hard enough to hurt anything at all. Just wiping this around. Now I'm going to come around here and I'm going to get rid of a bunch of this extra clay. Just because, wow, look at that, perfect circle. Just because it's easier to get it out of my way. And you can see better. So now... I'm going to take my serrated rib because I do want to put a foot on this. I can go the shape of my octagon or I can, whoops, simply go round. I think I did the other ones round, so I'm just going to go round on this. Just spin my banding wheel, my banding wheel system, and get myself a circle. And then I'm going to wet it. And then I have my trusty dusty battery powered extruder with the triple circle die. And I'm going to lay it on the table because it's heavy. And I'm going to pull this out. That's way more than I need because I was talking. I always put my plastic right back on and I take my lid off, put my plastic and I screw my lid and then it won't get dried out if I don't use it for a few days or even a week. Okay, I heard some blowouts and I see a few blowouts. So if you see big blowouts, I'm going to put it right here where you can see it, you can squish it in and run over it with your finger and usually you won't see them anymore. If you still have holes, that was where my battery died. So on to the next video. So if you still have the holes, I take just a little tiny bit of clay and I can stick it in there and I take it right off the end, wet my finger a little bit and just kind of sculpt it in and you'll never see them. And if you mess up your line by doing that, like I messed it up really good right there. I'm gonna take my rib, I'm gonna roll it in that line and kind of wiggle, wiggle back and forth And there's my line back. You don't even see it. So I'm going to look and see what's the prettiest top edge. And that'll be the top of my foot. I'm just going to rub my sponge across here. 
And then I'm going to, this is way more than enough, so I'm going to cut some of this off so it's not so hard. I'm going to pop it down here. Oops, I missed. Like that. So I have a flat bottom that I'm going to score. And I'm going to wet this. Just like that. And flip it up here on my dish. Let me bring this. And I'm just going to spin this around. If I want this back, I can come back. Spin it around so that I can get a nice pretty round circle. And I left my knife over on the clay table, so I'll use a rib. I'm just going to come down this with the rib, wiggle that out, and take my serrated rib, because that's what I had handy. And with this, and then what I do is I press it in and see that come out. I just rub, if I need to get my fingers wet, I just kind of rub right over the top of it and then that bottom and see how that disappears. Get my circle nice and round. And then I'll come in here. Oh, I didn't get the outside, so I'm going to push that in, rub my fingers across that, get my bottom nice and round, and then on the outside, where you can see I messed up that line, again, I'm going to take my red rib and I'm going to roll it in that crack pretty good. And then when I go across it with my, see if I can show you this, See that line is right back in and nobody would ever know that it wasn't one continuous circle. Bring my sponge right around here. And I'm going to come inside with my sponge because I got a lot of score marks in there. Whoops, I just stuck my nail in that. And now I do like to take my brush and come and spin this. Get all those score marks out and all that extra slip out of there. Like that. See if I can get that nail mark out of there. Little rub, rub, rub with my finger. and it's gone. And I have a spot in here. I want to take my rib and I lift up and down and that rounds that off and makes a perfect line. And there is my bottom. Now I do like to, oh that's not big enough. Let me see if this is big enough. Uh, no. But this one is. I do like to take and just slightly push. You make sure it's cemented in, but I don't want to totally smush my my um, foot. There. And look at that. That is a beautiful foot. And the lines on the side are great. And now, cutting the rim is no race. So what I like to do is come in, especially on one like this. I keep my fingers, let me see how to get, I'm left-handed. So keep my fingers on either side of the clay and keep my needle tool straight. And then I can just come up and come right off the side 
because see how I see that template in there? So sometimes chewing away at it is good. Now I can see that template. I go right back in, come back up, and come back off. And just continue that all the way around. And again, we're not at any race to get this finished. Because I like to keep that, that point crisp on this one. So I find it easier to come up and straight up. You might find it easier to completely go around in one swoop and that's totally fine. It works. I got like one or two more swoops to go. Whoa, one. And then go down to where I started. And look at that. Look how pretty that is. So I'll take my sponge and go around. Kind of clean this up a little bit. I'm going to let this set up. And then we'll flip these babies over. Well, actually, what I'm going to do is I have a small one that's probably dry by now. So let me show you what I'm going to do. Hold that thought. Um, let, me, let me take this off my board so I can go bring the little one back. Be right back. I'll be right back in the next video, that is. Okay, so I'm going to show you the next little video. It just shows you how I flip it and put a... Um, push plate in there or anything you have that will set it up. Let me show you that and then I'm going to flip these and I'm going to discuss all the little tips and tricks that make it easier for you. So let's watch this last little video. Oh, by the way, I see that um, Mr. Wilson added a link also twice. Um, so um, three, see if you can click it with that link while we watch this last little video. Okay, this one probably still needs to set up a little more, but here's what I'm going to do. That'll work. I'm going to take just a template I have lying around and sandwich this. Lift this up. I'm going to lift my template right off and stick that in there. And I'm just going to set this right back in place. It doesn't have to be perfect. And flip this back upside down. And I even could have used a different template altogether. And then I'm going to simply press these tips down like that because I want this to look floral like and I want the tips to come up like this, not flat back. So I just put a um, one of my um, push plates. They're half inch thick. Push that down there and just lightly pressed my tips down almost to the board or to the template and that's going to give me my floral bloom. Now I'll do this with all of them as they get dry enough to do it and then we will come back and flip these and see what they look like. And I'm back. I went to get my iPad it's sitting on the cord. Let me hook this up and see if it's charged enough that I can show you this stuff. One second. I thought of it too late in the video. Put this in here. Oh, I got peanut crying in there. All right, let's see if it'll go. Oh, it did. Okay, move my phone. 
Let me bring this here. See this right here? Can you guys see that? I my ring light. I dropped it. Boom, right on the side of that. So I'll sand it later. But let's get this situated. Like this. Put me back on here, but move me over here since you're over here. All right, and let me show you some of the things that I do. Um, I don't know why that's like lopsided. I can't get it to show you straight. It is straight, but on here it looks like it's cattywampus. It's not. Okay, so what I do at this point is take my damp sponge, and this is pretty dry, but I, I can still move it a little bit. And I like to go around and just make sure, while it's still almost completely leather hard, that it's smoothed to where I want it. And like right here is a little clay thingy. Right here, I stuck my nail, so I just kind of go around in a little circle and take that out because once you bisque fire it, you know, it's kind of late. Now this one, let's see if I can get a better angle. Oh, see that big dent? That's where I dropped my ring light on it, and I'm not real sure I'm going to be able to get that out, but I'm going to try to sponge around in a circle, get it a little wet, and then I'm going to take a... Try my yellow rib. It's a little stiffer. And see if I can kind of pull that clay down and kind of pull this clay up. And I'm not sure I will even be able to, to fix that hole. See that right there? But I do have another little option. This one is if you take your clay body and you put some in plastic really, really wet, it'll get really mushy, really mushy and, dry, and uh, it fixes a lot of things. So for instance, I am going to find my needle tool. Maybe, where did I just, oh, there it is. I cleaned up and so I'm gonna score this. Yes, it's, look at that, I'm scoring that. And I'm not going to slip it because I'm going to take this clay. See how soft and mushy this is? I'm going to put this right in here and move this out of my way. Um, if any of you have ever watched Sarah Rollins Wells, she does this. I think she calls it clay putty. I kind of call it gooey clay. But... So, I'm going to put that on there. I am going to wet my fingers. And I'm going to kind of smush this in. I probably put too much. But I'm going to kind of smush this in. Like so. And then, I'm going to take my rib. I like to wet it just a little bit. And I'm going to run that across the top of it. Straight across. And then I got to be careful for this sharp edge. So I'm going to kind of come with the outside. And kind of smush it down. I'm the queen of fix it. <laughs> because I'm also the queen of break it. Okay. Now I'm going to go to a red rib. Dip that a little bit. And then I'm just going to come across this. And now I'm going to take my sponge and voila, the dent is gone. And that was a big dent. That, was, that dent was too big for me to fix. But because I scored it and because that was wet, 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 
um, gooey clay or um, clay putty, as uh, Sarah would call it, that took that dent out. So when you drop something on your pot, don't panic. Um, you can fix it. Put your clay body in plastic with lots of water. Let it get ooey gooey and fill it in. What do you think of that? Um, who was playing Kiln Tetris? Oh, <laughs> hey, Melody. Um, Caddy Wumpus. Uh, <laughs> my mom used to have the most hilarious sayings and you know, as you know, we lost her in May, so somebody's got to take over that. Okay, so I'm going to continue to go around. And again, this has set up. Look at this. That's pretty stiff. Probably set up a little too much for what I'm going to do to it. But I wanted to show you guys the next step past just seeing it flopped across. Hey, Melody. Seeing it flopped across the form and wet. And then where do you go from there? You know, so this is where you go from there. So I'm cleaning it up and I like to, again, I let this set up pretty good. And then I like to come into these indents and take my finger. I really need to cut my nails are getting too long and roll my finger in it like so just to kind of burnish that and keep it from cracking. I don't want to get it wet. I just, I mean, super wet. I just want it enough where I can kind of roll it and burnish it. You've seen me do this before, but this template uh, has a pretty deep inset, so you're going to really want to pay attention to these indents so you don't get cracks. So this is how you take care of that. I'm wetting my thumb on the sponge. And I'm going with my thumb over here because I was catching my nail. Okay, I got all of those. I got the back cleaned up. I got that big old dent out. Nobody will ever know. I dropped my light on it. Now I'm just going to take a template. Again, I just grabbed one of the templates I'm using. These aren't going to uh, swell up and break down on you. And it's easier. And it's lighter, so I'm going to slide this over and flip this. And remember, I um, flipped this earlier and put a, a form, a push plate, a dual drape, whatever you happen to have, I put in there. And see, it's cattywampus. I don't know why. It's my camera. Oh, well. But it's really straight right here. Okay, and so then what I'm going to do is I do like to just slightly push out and make sure it's not caught on my sides and then kind of wiggle. Oh, and there it popped right out. And there, I wish it was straight to you guys. There you have that. Now, what I'm going to do on the inside is the same thing. I'm going to take my sponge and I'm going to come up and soften these creases just a little bit on this form. And that one side is deeper, and that's probably because where I dropped my light. I'm going to soften this. If you put a scratch on the back where it curves in designs, that would not crack, but it seems not right. As, uh, I haven't heard that, but is anybody else? So on this side, I'm also going to make sure that anything, I roll my fingers in there, make sure it's smooth and even by rubbing it with my finger. Don't do this as soon as it's flipped. You want to make sure that it's pretty much almost leather hard. So that's what I would do, is I would go around and do that and clean this up. This is the late stage. Also, on these little tips, I love these little tips. 
But maybe you have one like this one. It's kind of pokey. So you can soften it a little bit with the sponge and then just kind of rub your finger across the top and take the pokey out. You can lightly tap with a rib. That'll take the pokey out. Okay. And then notice how I've got my hand behind here because you certainly want to support it. And see how it's got that little bump right there? I'm funny. I don't like those bumps. So I can take that bump out with my rib just like that and then wipe it off and the little bumpy's gone. Um, let's see. Like, I don't know if you can see that one. I'm just going to lightly wet it with the sponge and actually the sponge took care of that one. Oh, that one's kind of big. So this is fussing. This is just fussing. So I'm going to scrape up that with my yellow rib. That's all it took. But that's how perfect you can fix it. Here's another little bumpy. So it's how much do you want to have it look more professional, let's say. Eh, I don't like that word professional, but how much fussing do you want to do? And there you have that. Now, I thought with this form, for the first one, I thought what I would do is a peacock glaze dripping down from these tips. Now, let me go. I don't know who that is talking, Jackie. Okay. Um, yes, it, uh, Deb, it is available for the smaller hybrid. That would be the six and a half inch for that five inch hybrid. It would be the six and a half. Um, I added that specifically for the little guy. Now, let me go get the other two and put them inside here and see what this flower does. And man, I just don't know how to make this straighter. Oh, well, maybe that's a little straighter. I don't know. That might look straighter. It still looks cattywampus. In person, it doesn't. Let me grab the other two. Okay, so I haven't cleaned this one up yet. See? See all of the little bumpies and lumpies? I will clean that up just like this. But I'm going to set this one, same bottom. I'm going to set this one inside. And what I may like, golly, I wish you could see it from my end. This angle is not working. But I can either pull these tips down a little bit now that I have it together being very careful because I just sponged them so they're a little more pliable again I can pull those down a little bit and maybe I want to pull these now see these are these are pretty dry I'm gonna have to get on this one I may want to pull this one up but be careful you don't want to crack your insides by waiting too late like I may have just done like I just broke this little tip off shame on me but I have a fix for that. Want to see it? Back to my little clay. My super wet clay. Because I shouldn't be doing this this late in the game. I broke that little tip off. But watch this. I'm going to take this little tip that I broke. I'm going to stick that clay putty in there. And I'm going to stick this tip back on. This is not ideal but it will work. And then I'm going to rub it in front and back. Because the clay is still wet, and then I'm going to take it over and stick it under plastic so that that wet clay that I just put on there, could you see where it was? That one. That wet clay that I just put on there will, um, bring that other tip back in, bring the moisture content back up, and that should stay. 
So pretend like this is all cleaned up like the outer one. I'm not going to mess with that anymore until I wet it. I'm going to go get the little one. Okay, here's the little one. This is the baby hybrid. And I haven't cleaned up inside of here yet either. So if, um, you know, you do yours and think, oh my gosh, that looks terrible. Well, because you do a lot of your cleaning here. But look at this. Gosh, I got to get this the right angle so you can see this. There you go. How's that? Is that amazing? There you go. Um, and I'm tipped up about four inches on one side and two on the other because I don't know how to make my camera straight. But that's... Um, there is all kinds of things. It's just why I did not texture this one. Um, and I haven't cleaned it up, but I will as soon as we get off the air. I will clean it up so it's as clean as the first one. But think about all the things you can do. For instance, I'm going to use this sponge. But let's pretend this was um, this. Here. Let's pretend... We took a piece of clay and laid it over this. This is one of those little bath bomb things that I was showing you when we were making jewelry. Well, what if I took a little piece of clay and put it, I don't have one or I'd do it, put it over this and let it set up and set it, that clay, right in the center of that, just as a centerpiece. Or... I made it smaller and I took my extruder and I extruded the little bitty noodles and it had little bitty stamens and that was in the center or just make this in the center and then when you're going to get it out as a serving bowl you flip this over because it's a, a beautiful little dish and this you can put um, a little condiment in for the things that are in your dish. So, creative. Being creative. Um, I am going to go get the... Yeah, there. That's straight. And if it had this tiny... Whoops, upside down. You can put that in there and then make a condiment dish out of that. But how gorgeous would that be? Yes, it would also be a gorgeous fountain. Who said that? Misty. Nope. Who said the fountain? Facebook user. Well, my phone hasn't caught up, so I can't see it. But look at this lovely thing for just a few minutes. Let me see if I can put a sponge under it and make it straight. I'm going to go get the glass piece I made. And then, oh, Therese, are you still on? I want to show you. This is the extruder. It is by Milwaukee. It is a, I think the number's on here somewhere, the model number. I think it was like 1442 or something like that. I don't see it. But the key to this, okay, three, you're on. So the key to this, it's by Milwaukee, and we in the clay world call this an extruder. But the guys in the DIY it stuff, they call this a caulk gun. The, the thing you got to look for is some of these battery-powered caulk guns will be a half a tube in black, which means you, for, oh, 2442. Thank you, Mr. Wilson. So you have to watch and make sure you get this full metal tube. And I will tell you, this full metal tube will also fit on your Scott Creek extruder and vice versa. But if you get one that has just the half a tube, that's to put a tube of caulk in. That will not work for our purposes. So, and it's heavy, which is why I lay mine on the table and press the button and let the extrusion come out. But it's, this one is a Milwaukee brand. So that's that. Um, we're almost at six o'clock. I don't know why, Mr. Wilson, but everything you're posting, you're posting double. Um, 
Let me go get that glass flower. Hold on. Be right back. So what put me in the flower mood, you say, besides the fact that I've done, uh, I started doing the nested set flowers and centers, oh gosh, four years ago. Oh, first number was wrong. Okay, it's 2442-21, Therese. So this is what I made in the class I was in, one of the pieces I made. The other, the other project we made totally broke down and blew up in the kiln. But when you go to a class, you're not there just to take home a project. You are there to learn the technique. And if you take a project home, well, that's just bonus, right? So if you ever go to a class like the one we that I just went to and the thing whole, totally blew up in the kiln, eh, the whole class, um, don't be upset at the instructor. It's not the instructor's fault. You know how kiln gods can be, and it's the same way in glass. But it's the technique you're there for. So wait till you see this. Here is my uh uh, what is this called? Gosh darn, my brain just died. Trumpet. This is the trumpet that goes to the flower. Oh, don't fall. Let's see if you can see this better on that. Look at that. Oh. The, and that gets screwed together and put on a stand, which I haven't gotten that far with it yet. But look at that. Is that not gorgeous glass? Now, if I put it up, oh, here, where I had, let me see if I can get this ring light without breaking my clay project again. Oh, that's too much. I can't get it where the, the light will go under it, so you'll see it in the glass, because I don't want to knock it on my project again. But this is gorgeous in person with the light coming through it. Um, yes, I totally intend to transfer this into clay. Um, totally intend. I came from the glass world, fell in love with clay, but I'm going back into glass as well, and I will be transferring clay techniques to glass, glass techniques to clay, and, um, and then you guys will all benefit from that. But that's, the only difference is this, this piece of glass, um, the dollar amount in materials is huge, uh, comparatively speaking. Let me go back here. Because my, the, the materials in that glass is huge, comparatively speaking, to what's in that clay. But, um, I have all kinds of things that came out of techniques from that that I'm going to put into clay that are going to be gorgeous. But look at this. Um, I absolutely love this. And I only chose three sizes. Um, you can do all kinds of sizes in this. Anyway, that is what I had for tonight. Does anybody have any questions? Oh, let me tell you. Oh, my battery's going down on my phone, too. I am having a struggle with batteries today. We will be at Alabama Clay Conference. Uh, anybody on here know the exact dates? Let me look it up if you don't. Alabama Clay Conference. The, it is February 10th and 11th, Friday and Saturday, February 10th and 11th. That week, I don't know if we'll be on the create side or the slab side, but that week 
we will not be doing lives. We will not be doing anything because we will be in Alabama. Um, when we leave Alabama, we will, um, hold on, let me, let me go see who that is. When we leave Alabama, we will be heading to Georgia, just three hours from there, to Mr. Wilson's family for a day or two, and then be back home. So we may not do lives for those two weeks because we are going to be out of pocket. Um, these, this, this is, um, I used the new hybrid off to, where did I put them all? Oh, right here. The shape I used for that is the new hybrid um, octagon, 22 and a half, half inch angles. I used the um, the baby, the six and a half inch, and the eight inch. And the outside shape, I, I can't see who's asking that, but the outside shape is the new Lotus Bloom. Let me see if I can... Oh, here, let me do it this way. It's the Lotus Bloom templates. And there is actually a stencil that, that goes inside the Lotus Bloom. If you want it, they're all separate. You can just mix and match and choose what you want. But that's what that is. Lotus Bloom. And on our way to... The conference, we will be swinging through and visiting with Melissa Bell, and I will get to see her studio that is so everything in its place. My studio is so everything not in its place. Um, I can't see any comments anymore for some reason. I don't know why on my phone. So... I cannot see the comments on my phone anymore, so I'll just have to go with um, seeing them on Facebook. All right, that's all I have for you guys tonight. If you have any questions, uh, message me, email me. Um, I came in late. Are those the 3D forms for the set? Yes, Deb. Oh, it's Deb. Okay, so um, those are the 3D hybrids, the 22 and a half inch angles. Um, let's see, miss the first, what shapes? Okay, I got that. All right, I think that is everything. Did you check what, on Comcast? Okay, Chromecast. Um, does anybody else, somebody was telling me that they um, cast Kajabi to their TV. Does anybody use Chromecast or have the Chromecast symbol using Google Home to connect? Uh, oh, I'm not over here anymore. If anybody uses that, can you please email me with how you do that? I have a user that's trying to use um, Google Home and I don't use it and I couldn't find what I found. They di didn't work. So if you have anything for that, can you please email me so I can pass that on or put it here in the comments of this or post a post in the create group of how you do that. I would certainly appreciate that. All right. <clears throat> I guess I've talked too much. I will see you next week. Slabbers, Slab the Fab Group. We are going to be doing a Glazerama um, probably Sunday afternoon. I'm going to put a post out in the Slab group. We are going to do a Zoom, and we are going to chat together, glaze together, do whatever together. I'll put that in um, the Slab group for you guys, though. See you guys in a few.